This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And that's important today because we're going to be talking about an event shortly that's happening right up the road. There's so much wrestling happening in this neighborhood uh, once again. And it's so cool to see that happening just right across, you know, whether it's across the street or up the block from the studio. It's becoming Wrestling Central here in Pittsburgh. And we're going to talk a little bit about why. Uh, of course, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can check out this and other podcasts. And also a lot of people that we talk with on the show are over at Indie Wrestling. Dot us you can check out check out a lot of uh, indie wrestling from the pittsburgh and the cleveland areas as well as the indie wrestling network as well start your free trial for that um and uh also you can drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 or the email address good times at wrestling let us know who you'd like us to chat with or if we have anybody listed over there uh coming up for an interview you can drop questions as well and of course keep an eye on uh indie wrestling.us's facebook page where we do have the live streams and you can see facebook events or maybe we'll pop up for with a surprise interview every once in a while there's follow that page like it follow it so you always get the notification and can drop in with us so we have a special guest he uh when i moved in he was he was right next door to me i was i, I was, had a pro, yeah. i had a pro wrestler cutting hair uh barbershop style I, I still i still claim you know before they do something else with this building somebody needs to come next door and, and reenact the barbershop window with Shawn michaels <laughs> yes i that was that was good to you latin that, that was assassin great to you, the latin assassin michael ponte is joining us here Thanks today for Thanks for coming on, man. Uh, so uh, we like to do a little um, icebreaker kind of question here to get people started, you know, get to know you a little bit. So what is your earliest memory of pro wrestling? <laughs> um, Ric Flair with his pinky ring pointing his at the television. Ring. Yeah, I, it's funny because I, I wear a pinky ring to this day because of, of that day. I'll never forget it. Um, and then... Uh, they beat Dusty Rhodes to a pulp. Remember that when they blacked out the bat, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I was like, "That's it. That's exactly what I want to do. I don't care what level it is. I'm gonna do it, man." That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. So I ruined you- a lot of corduroids when I was a kid. My mom wasn't happy <laughs> wrestling out in the grass. It, it was pretty cool, man. Making cardboard belts. It, it was a lot of fun. That's awesome. So where? Did, how did you go from there to? So you watched all through all through childhood, then? Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, wrestling superstars Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, you know, watching Snuka and, and and Bundy and, and it, it was it was just good, man. And I remember just being a kid. I always thought NWA was real and WWF was fake. You know, and I used to hate <laughs> when they bounced over. You know, I used to be how are the Brain Busters gonna do it over here when you know they wrestle for real. Mm-hmm. But it, it was great, man. That was the whole thing about being a Mark. You know, I wasn't a smart Mark then, but. You know, I was a mark. You know what I mean. It's probably a little harder to get into being a smart mark back then. It is. It, oh yeah. Well, yeah. It is. Especially when you think, wow, did they just beat Dusty Rose to a pulp and they didn't get arrested? <laughs> you know, I mean, they they beat the dust out of Dusty, man. <laughs> they did. That was good TV. Uh, so how did you go from there to you go know, determining you want to get in the right? It was just a thing you wanted to do right away. It is because, like, I mean, we I grew up in the projects, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So I mean, everybody thought that it was like kung fu theater. Mm-hmm. You'd watch it, and everybody wanted you know kick your butt, you know. After everybody thought they were Bruce Lee, you know. So you know, I always thought I was Barry Windham, you know, when I was a kid, and you know, I wrestled. That, and my move set is exactly Barry's, and I and I and I send them stuff all the time, I'm like you know, thank you, man, because you know that flying lariat, man. Help me get a lot of paychecks, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I always knew it, man. We'd be out there. I grew up with a guy, Dirty Don Montoya. I don't know if you've heard of him, but excellent wrestler from Trenton, New Jersey, man. And it just, I, we, I mean, we used to kill each other in junior high school, man. And we, used to, like I said, we used to make the little cardboard belts, man. Lunchtime, we, we'd come in, just beat the shreds, man, try to finish the day out of school, man. It was a lot of fun. I knew I was going to do it. I knew it. So how did you make that transition? What, how did you uh, discover a wrestling school? Well, I did, and and it goes back to, to Don uh, because he went to the Monster Factory, Larry mm-hmm. Sharp's Monster Factory in South Jersey. And I didn't know 
how prominent Larry Sharp was in the business. Like he, a lot of a lot of cats came out of his school, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was I was broke then. You know, what I mean, so I got I got with this guy Dino Santa. He was like a referee for like WWWA or something like that. I might be screwing that up a little bit, but I sent him a picture of me. He's like, ah, dude, you're gonna have to get taller. You're gonna have to get bigger. You know, I was like, all right, well. Don Montoya graduated from Larry Sharp School. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I got to go. I got to go check it out. I did a trial. I did a tryout. I sucked, you know, but I had the charisma. He's like, all right, let's, let, let, you know, let's do something. And he, you were able to make payments, dude. And, and I went to the Monster Factory, man. And Larry, man, you, you talking about Bigelow and, and Bundy, you know, D'Lo Brown. They would just show up, man, and, and just – and just coach you, man. And it was good, man. It's exactly what I needed. Because, again, like I, I always knew I was going to do this. I didn't care if I had to fake it until I made it. But mm-hmm. I was going to do it no matter what. So in, in Monster Factory is, again, a school that's still, I, I hear, people are still going out yes. there and doing seminars. Oh, my God. Like yeah, know. Belmar, New Jersey. Dude, I'm telling you, mm-hmm. they, they are the real deal, man. I mean, I, I put them right up there with, with the Samoans, dude. I, mm-hmm. I really do. Like, Larry Sharp had a, had a great mind for the business, man. And, and it's a shame that he didn't get you know, more airplay, more airtime, because he, he's a freaking genius, man. And, of course, you're talking about the Samoan school up there, and I think that's the Allentown area, right? Yeah, yeah. And they have another one in Florida, too. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but I put them right up there with those guys, man. Like, they know how to train. Old school, too. And, I mean, just, like, because to me, like, I, I'll always love wrestling, but the stuff you see now is, to me, 80% of the people work the same. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They have, they all have to have a finisher, you know, and, and it, to me, it, it kind of stinks because, you know, what happened to the schoolboys and the small packages, you know, <laughs> you know, from a from a worker point of view, like that's missed in the business, man. Happens every once in a while, then it becomes a. I know it, it becomes just, a treat, right? Yeah, it just yeah, became yeah. a thing with um a uh, backslide. You're like, oh yeah, man. yeah, like Daniel Bryan and Miz when they were in yeah. Australia, I think yeah. finished with that, and that yes. was a big deal. Yes, yeah, that's why I don't like. I, it's funny, I don't really follow wrestling too much, but I, I know what's current. Mm-hmm. And then when I saw when I saw Triple H and Sean do the thing, I was like, oh, this is gonna be nice and old school. So mm-hmm. I watched it, dude, and it, it was amazing, dude. And Triple H, I mean. The guy's in excellent shape, dude. Yeah, 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 those, uh, people, especially listening to our show, were like, why the hell are those guys out there? It's like, this is why. It brings, it brings why, the people yeah. back. Sometimes yeah. you got to bring it into perspective, like what got you to mm-hmm. the dance, man. Mm-hmm. You can't just, you know, punch and kick your way through the business, man. You can't do it. You know, you got to cut and bleed, man. So you became the Latin assassin. Were you Latin assassin right off the bat? Or no, no, we, we, no. We went don't say iterations? this to no, I say don't say this to nobody, but... <laughs> Welcome was, to the internet. <laughs> right, right. That's right. That's right. I thought when I say this, you're going to think, oh, you're, so you were going to be Adrian Adonis. I was going to be the Latin sensation, Chris Reyes. And, and, and I was like, but I'm supposed to play tough. Yeah. And it, it worked for like maybe one match. And they were like, dude, you almost killed this guy. You're not a Latin sensation, man. You, you're, you're probably like an assassin. And I said, Wow, there's been a Cuban assassin. Okay. There's been a Russian assassin. Uh-huh. There's been a Croatian assassin, but there's never been a Latin assassin. So I trademarked it. I did. I trademarked it. And I remember this guy, I forget if this Latin wrestler was uh, working for the Fed. And he went, LA Latin assassin. And I said, oh, no, no. <laughs> you can't do that, man. So, you know, it, it was cool though. It, it was cool. So I was a Latin assassin. That's it. You know, I'm from the projects. I'm from the I'm from the streets and, and that's you know, and that's you know, that's that's what I wanted to portray. Not a portrayal, I mean it was me being the real deal, but I needed something that stuck and Latin sensation wasn't it. I wasn't a model, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get the taller at least and I'll let out. Yeah, no, I, I, I got the I, I got the five ten and a half, but I'm six one with the boots. There you go, there you go. <laughs> There you go. It works for Tom Cruise, right? Yeah, right. Get the list right. in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. So you, I know we we chatted a little bit. You like like you 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 had some you you met some pretty big time people getting started in the business. My first match was with Snooka, dude. Mm-hmm. It's Trenton, New Jersey. Maybe three and a half minutes long. <laughs> I, I I think I might. But, but that's just... all you need out of Snooka back then, right? Yeah, well, you, you thing, know what though? Right? No, because he had just. Mm-hmm. Remember, he was doing Eastern Championship Wrestling 
he was their first TV champion. Right. And the guy could still work. Yeah. And then and what, I, what era are we talking about here? This is 94 when, okay. when, when ECW first started. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were Eastern championship. So, so you're, you're in, you're around New Jersey. This is around the time when ECW and we have a lot of we're discussions. We're starting to get hot. And we're getting a lot of discussions about ECW with our Duke and Doe hardcore yeah. uh, memories show over on the network. So mm-hmm. we're kind of revisiting this a little bit lately. Uh, so you're around that buzz. Snooka came in through East, East Eastern Championship Wrestling. Right at that time, yeah. Probably pretty fresh off of being on WWF. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. That's when he was wearing the long trunks. Yeah, like Mania you know, would they take were starting her. To phase him out. Mania yeah. would take her and stuff like yeah. that, right? So so, so you had a, still a fairly, fairly prime Dude, It was the best moment of my life. Yeah. That's the dustiest VHS I have, but, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put it in because it was it was just fun man i think about it man i'm i'm mm-hmm. young i'm like i'm 20 and i'm like wow jimmy snooker dude and then you then it's a squash and i'm like oh okay i was like can i do something he's like no kid you do what i tell you and i was like all right you know that's fair enough mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and it's funny because god rest his soul you know glory be to god but he uh i saw him at a couple years ago, we went. That's when they were doing um, in Amsterdam the the the, the, the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. it, the dustiest little town. They had like like a half a diner, you know. It was, but it was cool though. He remembered me, and he said, "Come here, kid." And I'm sitting with Sean Blanchard and Lou Martin, and you know, a bunch of wrestlers. We went up there, mm-hmm. and he remembered me, dude. And and that was like the highlight of my life, right there, man. This is 20 years later. Yeah, you know, maybe fifteen at the time, but dude, for you to remember me and say, "Yeah, you're the, you're you're that guy whose ass I kicked in Jersey," I was like, "Yeah, I'm yeah, that you're guy. just like some guy at a spot show he showed Yo, up to in oh, Jersey." It, it right? was the best, man. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy was a class act, man. It's, mm-hmm. it's a shame that he had to go through all the, you know, the BS. But he, real class act, man. He he helped me out, you know, because at that time, all you need is you need to get squashed, and then you need a conversation, mm-hmm. and you got it from him. Mm-hmm. You know, do this, do that, and. I did, man. And he's like, you know, it's a screwed up business. You know, it makes a break. So be ready. And, you know, I, I wasn't ready, but, you know, I jumped out the window and I flew. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good guy. Really good guy. Got rest his soul, man. So you've been at for a good while. Of course, now you're not wrestling currently. Oh, no, no. I'm retired, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm done. I, um, the last match I did was here mm-hmm. down the street. Sean Blanchard, um, Kicked his ass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I threw out my knee again. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I think I could still do it, but, you know, it's weird now because I'm trying to enjoy this, this skinny body now. I'm not 260 <laughs> anymore, you know what I mean? But now I'm retired. I'm done. I'm having fun now, though. You okay. know, I got the business again local, so just having fun. Well, you started off with Snuka, so that right there is a career highlight. Like, what, yeah. you know, obviously wrestling, you know, New Jersey. You know, I got some Jake Pittsburgh Roberts now. stories, but I, yeah. I just don't. He, he's he, he's a he's a godly brother now. So, well, you we're gonna talk you up because I know he's coming to town. I think he's doing, is he? He's doing a show. I think in the South Side coming up soon. Really, mm-hmm. man, he, he's doing great, man. God bless him, man. I'm, it's, I'm happy for him, you know, because it was touch and go there for absolutely. a while. And we all we we all have our demons, man. But you know, he just has so much to to give to this business man and he's like eddie gilbert you know he has like those minds that you know are mm-hmm. dusty you know if he tells you it ain't gonna work and it it's not gonna work you know what i mean but he has a great mind for the business and, and it's funny because i think i still think like vince could really use a guy like that man in mm-hmm. the back you know what i mean even for just to motivate guys you know what i mean because he, he's he's a good guy he really is man he seems like a guy that they could certainly kind of implement as like an agent or something or at least like come down sure to, come yeah down go get some talent absolutely come down to the performance center or mm-hmm. something like that yeah i mean yeah. they got sean doing i mean obviously yeah. they have yeah. sean doing i mean he's the best worker you know but well, top three <laughs> flair number <laughs> one um and he'll tell you that too yeah you know what though yeah yeah i i became a wrestler because of him mm-hmm. so you know i'm kind of uh, biased to, to flair you know but um yeah, Jake. Jake has a lot to offer, man. He he really is, you know. And it's a shame because he, he was on a, like a, like an eight year hiatus, man. Mm-hmm. And you you don't good guy though, good guy, man. God, like I said, glory be to God, man. He's he's doing great, and I'm gonna have to go check it out now. I mean, I, I didn't think he was working anymore. Uh, yeah. Well, no, not working. He's doing his stand up. Is 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 wait what? Yeah, he's doing. He does. He does like 
I don't know if it's stand up or at least storytelling. Like kind of like how McFoley's going around and doing yeah, this thing. Yeah, nice. Yeah, okay, I'm, still, I'm, I'm definitely going to go to that though. Kind of like slam poetry. You yeah, know, but, but for wrestling, kind of. I think it's just storytelling. I I don't know exactly cool, what though. Jake's, but everybody's been doing this lately, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like yeah. I I I didn't see the draw in it though, but I guess I mean if if it works. You know, I mean, you could tell your grandkids or you could tell other people in charge for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, that's smart. So, again, you had some brushes with greatness there right to begin with. Uh, um, yeah. Well, you know, obviously in New Jersey, here in Pittsburgh. But, uh, you know, tell us a little bit more about your travels over the years. Pittsburgh, though, like I, like I said, I've been to Cleveland, Florida, Texas and stuff. But mm-hmm. I moved. You know, granted, I went from, from Jersey to New York and I was getting in trouble in New York. So <laughs> I said, you know, I have to do something you know, that, that makes a difference, you know? So I got into the wrestling thing and still getting into trouble. <laughs> but then I started getting some work here and I, and Don Montoya again, you know, I, I Don, I'm going to call you now because I, I'm, I'm bringing your name up. So your ear must be itching. Um, he, um, he, he got a lot of work here. He was working for SCW, Norm Connors. Remember Norm Connors? Okay. He was doing a lot of work with Norm. And, and that uh, was still, still city wrestling. Still city wrestling, like, right. SCW. Up, yeah. Still city wrestling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, late, late nineties. Yeah, yeah, they were in that little garage thing, but they were put on a nice show. They mm-hmm. had like three out of three out of the four sides of the ring showing. You know, if you Irish whipped, you were gonna get hit you know, against the wall. <laughs> you know? But I saw Don there, and Don said, "Dude, did you follow me up here?" I'm like, really, man? From Jersey, I came up to see you wrestle. But you know, I was just starting to get work here, and I was like, I have to move. You know, and I met a girl, and you know, you know how that goes. <laughs> the rest is history. Uh, 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 yeah, obviously. Uh, and of course, uh, with KSWA. You know what I was years. doing? Actually, I was doing um, WPWA. It was like Joe Perry. Mm-hmm. Joe Perry, good guy, too. You should have him on, too. Really good guy. Um, Joe Perry, um, Sam Sledge, and um, oh my God, I can't forget his name. Oh my God, I forget his name. Uh, but we had kind of like a falling out because I think what they thought was, oh, I have a, I have a wrestling company, so you have to work just for us. And I'm like, you know, that doesn't make sense. You know, that's like you're hungry and you only eat at McDonald's. You know, mm-hmm. it's just not going to work that way. You want you want BK every once in a while. You know what I mean? Or or Dinah. You know. So we just we 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 kind of fell out, and Sean Blanchard and Lou Martin were just and Skippy Hawk just started to get this um KSWA rolling you know and as soon as I saw Wrestling Alliance on the name mm-hmm. I say I got to get with it because it was old school it, it was you know it, we wanted to keep it nostalgic you know what I mean so we were working down at the um what Bloomfield the little VFW there we were doing a lot of a lot of spots there mm-hmm. and I just fell in love and I stuck with them dude and we were all old school guys that loved the horseman and we we did a VIP angle, you know, that I was like the I was the Wyndham of the horseman and it fit perfectly, man, because Barry Wyndham was if you look back, just look at those days, man. Barry Wyndham's one one hell of a worker, man. And we got a little bit of you. You can find a Latin assassin with KSWA. Uh, let's see, you you you're about to blast this referee here. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he kinda kinda turned a blind eye. <laughs> you know, there's the the Wyndham Larry. Like you know, I wish you'd have took a better bump for that. But you know, um, like I, like it, KSWA was fresh at the time. You know, and and the, mm-hmm. they have a long, they have a long, we have a long history here. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, we do a lot of charity work and stuff like that. So. It was home. KSWA was home, man. I got a lot of opportunity there. Let's see, and, and even uh, they've they've been going insane with their schedule lately. A, a lot of you know, kind of spot charity shows and stuff. Yeah, so, and, and it, the nice thing is they're starting to bring in other acts. Other yes. acts are are, yeah. are wanting to work with that because yeah. we work with children. I mean, without children, you have no wrestling, dude. A it's lot, just a lot of great talent we see all over the place, like the Keith yeah, Haas and the Brohemoth, Death, man. Brohemoth, I saw him, man. I would Gregory. love to work there, man. Um, like of course, Keith Hunt, Keith Hunt as a you know T Ranchula's working T Ranchula, yeah, man. Yep. Yeah. I have never T Ranchula's a guy that I've always heard about, and, really, and I had never seen him. Like you know, whenever going through like the old logs for like IWC mm-hmm. and things like that, when we're doing our video yeah. stuff, I was like, oh, it's T Ranch. Everybody talks about T Ranchula, and then I finally got to see him. I started going to KSWA shows a couple years ago, and just mm. whenever I have you know Saturday nights or whenever. Uh, I, I try to get to another wrestling show that I don't work for. It's nice to just watch yeah, wrestling. It's no matter nice it to is, see right? them. Like I said, I've been yeah. out. I've been out the light for two years. You yeah. know what I mean? But it's nice to see them 
you know, get away from the once a month thing mm -hmm. and start booking two a month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because that's what I mean. That that's a big deal. I mean, because indie wrestling, you know, we we hurt, we hurt, you know, especially with you know. The nice thing is with Vince just having that one product, mm -hmm. it makes it nice for guys like us, you know, that we can travel more and get more work. But, you know, indie indie wrestling still, you know, they still we take we take a hit for being indie wrestlers, you know. But yeah, it, it's the nature of the beast. Absolutely. So great stuff going on over there. Of course, I, I want to talk a little bit about my introduction to you. Uh, it was the first Beach View Brawl. The so Beach View Brawl. In the yeah. parking lot down here. I'm just like, guys, they have like, there's a wrestling three blocks from my house. Yeah. I got to go check this we, out. We drew 70 people. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that was. It, in a parking lot full of people. It was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, you know, you it was like, we, we did better the next year. But, yeah, yeah. You know, but the, you know, it, it's a I starting had, point. And it, it was more than 70 people up there throughout was the there, day. It might have been. It might have been. I think I'm being modest. but There's a lot of people all over the place. But nice. You know what? I think you're right because we saw. We saw a lot of cats jump off that trolley stop there, mm -hmm. and which was cool, you know, because it was it was my first. Because there was literally like a trolley stop right right there. in front of it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, I think we drew more than seventy. We might have drawn seventy one, seventy two. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was great. So, I, yeah, it was it was nice. So it, it was watched, a good event. I watched the show. I think it's first. It might I might have seen a KSW show by then. I can't recall. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, I, I'm getting introduced to the product and what's going on here. All of a sudden, I hear. Yeah, you know, there's a food truck behind me. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide behind the food truck trying to watch the show. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, I hear uh, Trapper there and uh, uh, announcing and just like, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, the unofficial mayor of Beachview. Yeah. I'm just like, what is, is it really? Wait, is, he, is he in town? What? Who is this guy? Wait, we have a mayor. We're we're in the city. What? Yeah, wait, right. no, wait a minute. This this we're a neighborhood. This doesn't work. Uh, so that, already, that, that's Trapper Tom <laughs> for you, man. I mean, Trapper Tom. He's one of them guys, man. He'll make you look like a million bucks if you're worth five. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. And and obviously, I was I was worth five that day because you know I'm cooking. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. You're, you're I, running a food truck at I'm, this. Yeah, I was running a food truck at the time, and we, I'm trying to get the grill started. Mm -hmm. that good. We we use these huge briquettes, man. It was funny. They wouldn't turn on, but once they were turned on, you couldn't turn them off. You know what I mean? But it, it, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun that day. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I had just painted the truck. And Sean slams Chris Cash's face in there, <laughs> and it puts a huge dent right in there. Oh, that's you know, so indie wrestling. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> ah, that's good. So I'm watching this thing. They got that. And I'm just like, well, that was weird. Like, the guy in the food truck's a, a mayor or something. I don't like, you know. And I, I feel like I, I've lived in this neighborhood for a while and never really paid mm -hmm. attention to the neighborhood. So I'm like, you know, I'm learning stuff right over the last several years. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, I think final match of the night. And then the guy, I see this guy do a run in from the food truck <laughs> for the food truck. Yeah, through That's the a, tongs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just like I've never seen anything like this <laughs> yeah, before. It was, it was He's cool. the unofficial mayor he does a run-in <laughs> spot of the night uh <laughs> you don't know this but check this out i ran in so fast i split my pants <laughs> from the crotch to the top of the ass let me tell you luckily i had black boxers on because i had black pants on like checkered like they were like checkered and i say wow and I'm taking pictures with all these kids, and I have one knee up. And I was like, wait, let me. You know, I did the the, the phone thing, the Zoom. And I said, I have a huge hole in my pants. You know how many pictures people took of crotch that day? But it was worth it. It was worth it. I sold a lot of food, and, and I got to, you know, do a run-in, which was good. That's amazing. Uh, of course, you've been doing these beach root brawls, and one of the big things, this event coming up, uh, it is yes. the Halloween bash. I love that there's again wrestling in the neighborhood. Yeah, I mean this is the second event happening this year. This year is with amazing, wrestling, right? Yeah, right? It's amazing. I mean, and, they had the and, lucha thing there. I heard it went really over oh, yeah. to it. Got oh, over. Yeah. It, was, it was good. Uh, and of course, that lucha show available on Fight TV. Look for Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh. I got to throw the shout out there. Uh, but right up the road, this is also the second like Halloween wrestling events happening here in town. I mean, and by the way, there was going to be a third. I, I heard. I heard yeah, it that didn't work out. It's cool, man. And like it's I amazing. said, for indie wrestling, man, you know, for us to be able to book more than one show a month or anyone, mm -hmm. you know, because indie is really every 30 days, you know what I mean? Every two weeks tops. But for them, I mean, just to, just to, the influx of wrestling Absolutely. is great. And the nice thing is, I just told you that I really don't watch the Fed anymore, but 
now I'm going to want to watch Kim because now there's more indie wrestling, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and the power of professional wrestling is still there. Absolutely. So this is the big, uh, this is part of the Romero Lives um, uh, series of events that's happening here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, very excited. Celebrating about George Romero here. Uh, it's the Halloween Bass. Holland Effects uh, is uh, is the uh, uh, lead company on this, but there's going to be a lot going on here, including yeah, the pro Steve wrestling. Yeah, Steve man. He's 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 one. He's got one heck of a mind, man. Doug Bradley of the Spine Chillers and uh, some yeah, horror movies Hellraiser. out there. The Hellraiser himself, uh, and so much more. They're going to unveil a Romero statue, but there's going to be uh, skin suspension Ugh. and all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. I saw these guys at the gathering. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Well, you can check that out. It's over at uh, TolanFX.com and look for the Romero, Romero Lives uh, button for more information on that. But talk about a little bit of that. You know, again, you're once again, you're, well, you're, again, you're, you're bringing more wrestling to the yeah, beach view here. You know what, Sorg? I'm going to be With a different with backdrop to it. Well, well, on a personal note, you know what happened, you know, down the street and everything. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I was done. I was done with wrestling, dude. I really was. I had no, no fever pitch for it anymore. I was just unhappy, you know what I mean? And then I meet Steve through Dan. Steve Tolan, Tolan Effects. Yeah, through, mm -hmm. through Tolan Effects, through Dan Berkowitz, another great guy, man. And I and I, I opened a shop inside the special effects place. Mm -hmm. And him and me clicked. And then he looks at me one day, he goes, man, I'm putting this thing together. And he, I had just said I was done with wrestling maybe a week before because I told him my story. And he gives me the eye, man, if I only knew wrestlers. <laughs> and I said, Steve, don't do this to me, man. I'm done. He's like, yeah, but look at look at the kind of fusion. That's his favorite word, fusion. Look at the fusion we can make. I was like, all right, let's do it. You know what I mean? And 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 it, and it was needed here because, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the Beachview Brawl, you know, it, it was successful, you know. And, 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 you know, I still care about it. I love this neighborhood, man. So I was like, Let, let's do it. You know, and then it has the Halloween feel to it too, man. Which you can't go wrong with that. You know, we we got Blood Beast. You know, one of my one of my greatest opponents, I guess you could say. You know, um, he'll be here. You know, and, and it, it's it's Halloween based, and it's really freaking cool, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. So it'll be. It's free to the public. It's going to be. Yeah, yeah. It's free to the it's public. Full open. Uh, Absolutely. And, uh, everything. Got to pay want. for the food though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm launching the catering business that that day too, man. So and I'm still is, in the food truck. And it is right I mean? there on the corner. With the, yeah. there's a beer distributor yeah, right it's there as well. Be right there. So. Yeah, well, Puerto Rican food, man. <laughs> I'd love to put them in. My nephew, uh, my nephew Carlos, man. We're, we're relaunching this thing, and you know, we're we're, we're going to bring the food truck right back to Pittsburgh, man. And we're, we're we're going to take off again. That's awesome. Uh, so look forward to that. That's going to be Halloween night. That's a Wednesday night. Uh, and it's going to be go uh, going on, I think, during and after trick-or-treating. Yes, yeah, well 6 to 11. Night. 6, 6 to 11, 11, right after the parade. Yeah, there right after go. the parade. That's awesome, man. We're looking at some other stuff happening here in the Beefview neighborhood, too. Uh, so uh, let me know. So what are you watching these days? Uh, what, or what, what are you watching? Or is there anybody out there that's got your attention? Um... I have to say, like I said, I, I don't watch anymore, mm -hmm. but I keep relevant. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know I know what's relevant, who's relevant, you know, who they're pushing and can't get over, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. You know, I, I know who the workers are, but it's just, it's been, you know, I'm, I'm just not a big fan of the product because... To me, they just all wrestle the same, but I love wrestling. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to see, like I said, when when DX and, and did their angle with, with the brothers, I was like, it, it brought me back in. So now I'm really going to watch. I'm really going to start watching again. Because, I mean, I watch a little bit of Ring of Honor and, and stuff like that when, when I can. They got a lot of talent down there, man. I mean, it, it's a shame that they can't, you, you know, they, they, they can't get seen as much. I think that's something going. They're, they're, they're going they 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 do have Mad, something going. Mad yeah. Square Garden and everything. They did. That up, was so. huge, man. That was that was mm -hmm. big time, man. I don't even know what they drew, but I'm sure they packed that place, man. Because it's New York, man. I mean, they, New York loves wrestling. Absolutely, that's for sure. That's the place to do it for sure. Oh yeah. What is the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling for you? All these years. The best thing is having the ability to go wherever you want. You know, what I mean, kind of. You know, what I mean, paving your own road. 
and obviously the worst thing is, you know, the money, <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't get paid as much, but you do it more, more for the, the love of it and, and knowing that, you know, you're going to go somewhere in the future. But, you know, the bad thing is, it's just the, the, the bad karma that goes with wrestling. You know, the, the, like I said that, you know, it makes or breaks you, you know, you, you got egos in the locker room, you know, and, and I've always said that nobody, no name is bigger than a business, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of truth to that, but you know, we all have egos, you know, but you know, the best, one of the best things I also like is that you get to pass the torch on to these new kids, you know, and if you could be a mentor of any kind, you know, it, it makes it that much better, you know, but like I say, I, I love indie wrestling, man. And, you know, he's been very, very, very good to me, you know, and now that, and now that it, you know, that it, 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 we're getting an influx of it, I'm going to be watching like crazy as a fan. So I'm going to, you know, pay the ticket to go see these events. Awesome. Well, uh, where can people uh, check out what you got going on or maybe uh, go get a haircut? <laughs> well, like I said, we're at the Total Effects. You can yeah. find it at a, a Ponte Barber Company through Facebook um, and Mike Ponte on Facebook as well. There's also hey. a link there. You come in, you do Facebook check-ins. You know, you, you get discounts. I do the, you know, the hot shades, the, the typical man stuff. We like, we like to feel like men in the barbershop, you know, and, and that's what you got. You got a, a true gentleman shop there. Excellent. And I'm sure you got plenty of wrestling stories you can't tell on a podcast. I, I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> but um, if I can leave my telephone number, that'd be great. Can I do that? Yeah, go ahead. It's uh, 412-593-9823, Aponte Barber Company, 1701 Coast Avenue. All right. Right up the street here from right Sorgatron street, Media. Right up the street. Yes. So if you ever, you ever in for a show, grab a taco, go get your hair cut. Making a one one stop uh, shop yes, here. Yes, that, that shop is, that shop is amazing, man. That shop is amazing. <laughs> what what they're doing over there is amazing. Awesome. Probably not a cooler place to get a haircut. Right. Right. <laughs> well, thank you. You get so the much. Sweeney Todd. You get the Sweeney Todd thing. <laughs> the Latin assassin, Mike Ponte, joining Sorg, us. Sorg, thank you for having me. Thank I appreciate it. Thank you for being it. on. You can check out everything uh, going on with that again. Tolan FX for details on that event and check out all the other indie wrestling going over at indywrestling.us. And if you're curious shows like, like we talked about with other promotions in the area, especially in the Pittsburgh area, go to pittsburghwrestling.com. We have an event calendar over there and also just added, and we're looking to flesh it out. Uh, we just added a listing for wrestling schools in the Pittsburgh area as well. So if you're an avid pro wrestler or you want to be a pro wrestler uh, and don't know where to start, uh, we got a list of things there and uh, we're, if we're missing anything, let us know over there too. And, uh, uh, we're trying to flesh that out so people have a one-stop shop because there's so much wrestling happening here in Pittsburgh. Uh, and, uh, you know, let's let's get it all out there and make sure, like, let's grow it. Let's grow the audience for everybody out here. So go check it out. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next time. And until then, please support the new wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.